This is the most real part of the conversation. He says, Ya Bunayya, my beloved son, my young son, my little boy, aqim salata establish the prayer. They, they commonly translate that as establish the prayer. Let me tell you something about iqama. Iqama in Arabic comes from the word qiyam. And qiyam means to stand. And when you put it as iqama, this is from the if'al family, what that does is, it's to make something else stand. Right? So if, you're, if, you're, if somebody was building a tower, they made the bricks stand on top of each other and they built a tower. Right? So they did iqama of a building. That's, that's the iqama of a building. To make it erect, to make it stand. Iqama to salah, you can think of it, because we know we, we use these words, establish the prayer, establish the prayer. What in the world does establish the prayer mean? One of the ways you can think about that is preserve the prayer. Make sure it stays standing. When you do iqama of something, it's as if you put in a pillar in, or you put a pole or a pillar in the ground and you make sure you keep checking on it that it doesn't what? It doesn't lean, right? You keep making, maintaining it. And you keep, and so you're maintaining the prayer and preserving the prayer. That's actually within the meaning of iqama to salah. So Allah didn't just say pray. And he's, the, the father is not telling his son, pray. He's saying preserve the prayer, maintain the prayer. You know what that means? That means the prayer is something that can get damaged very easily. Because when something is delicate, and it can get damaged easily, then it needs to be maintained, and it needs to be preserved. Like a delicate plant, you have to make sure, some plants, you know, they can't stand on their own. So you have to put a stick in the ground, and they, they trellis, and it wraps around the, the, the stick. And you have to keep checking on it. Because if the winds were too high, or the sun was too harsh, the plant might burn out, right? So th this tarbiya of the plant, this making sure that it grows, making sure that it's preserved and taken care of, that's the kind of thing you have to do with prayer. Now, there are some things we have in our life that don't require that kind of care, right? So if you have a car, for example, you don't have to change its oil for a while, and it's running and doesn't matter, right? And sometimes, sometimes people don't take care of it for a long time until they find out that it's falling apart, right? There are other things you have to make check on them constantly, and if you don't, it's gonna, you know, it's not gonna last. By using the word aqim, what Allah is teaching us and what the father is teaching his son is it's not just enough that you pray. Because you could have like a busted, broken down building called prayer, and you just kinda got it over with. And that was your prayer. And your parents can come and say, did you pray? Yeah, I pray. I pray. Yeah. Yeah. You pray my prayer? Yep. And when you, when you actually, you know, secretly record your son or daughter praying, you find out that that looks more like a, you know, cardiovascular exercise than it looks like prayer. Because the, the rukur was done in light speed. You know, and the sajda looked more like a bird pecking the ground than a sajda. Why? Because... The prayer was just something you get it, get it over with. When you have love of preserving and protecting something, then you're constantly fixing, fixing, fixing. There are people that are fixated on the inner decor of their home. Or people that are really into gardening, checking on every flower. Oh, this one's getting a little weak. There's a, there's a delicate care that goes into it. Who touched my shoes? Some people have shoes that are like, they keep them like they, they belong at a museum on display, right? Well, you know what? The prayer, the father's giving the son advice, is something you have to go out of your way to preserve. And if you don't preserve it, it's going to fall apart. And it's going to be like, here's the analogy, it's going to be like a tree that looks like a tree, but it's just a hollow bark, there's nothing inside. You know, a tree that's a full tree, a car could run into it, the tree's not going to tip over, the car's going to be destroyed, right? But if a tree's hollow on the inside, and a car smashes into it, what's going to fall apart? the tree is going to fall apart because there's nothing inside. It, just, it looked like a tree, but it wasn't one. Well, what the prayer does is it actually fills you on the inside. It, it, it strengthens you and me on the inside, but it won't do that if we don't maintain it. We don't, if we don't maintain it. How do you maintain the prayer? And for some people, you know, it's one thing uh, uh, that you're not healthy to begin with, right? And then somebody says, maintain your health. No, well, if I'm not healthy to begin with, I need to fix certain things and go through certain therapy and medic medical treatment or, you know, some kind of process before I can actually get healthy. Then once I get healthy, I have to maintain it, right? 
So you can't just say, maintain your health. Well, I'm not healthy to begin with. I gotta get to a healthy place. So the harder question when the father says to the son, maintain your prayer is, the son has to ask himself, the daughter has to ask herself, is my prayer actually the way it's supposed to be to begin with, that I should maintain it? Because maintain would mean keep doing what you're doing. But if you're doing the wrong thing and you, and you say maintain the prayer, okay, I'll, I'll keep maintaining it. You're not making anything better. So first, what needs to be identified is, is the prayer, the way it is, is it supposed to be or not? The word salah actually comes from sila in Arabic, which is what we call the prayer, right? But there's another word for prayer too, dua. Dua is also a word for prayer. But Allah specifically uses the term salah. And salah comes from sila, and sila or wasl actually mean connection. Connection. The prayer isn't just words you say, isn't just movements that you make, it's not just specific direction that you follow. It's not step-by-step -step process. All of that stuff you learned. Either you learned it from your parents or somebody, your parents hired somebody to teach you or you went to a Sunday school or an Islamic school. You learned that stuff. Fine. That's the form of the prayer. But all of that, the purpose of all of that was one thing. To establish and to, to preserve the connection to Allah in the prayer. So let me just remind myself and you what the prayer is. The moment I say Allahu Akbar, can I talk to anybody? No. Am I supposed to be looking around? No. Is everything in the world, whether your phone goes off, or somebody's calling you, right? Or you're late for a meeting, anything going on outside other than life-threatening emergency. None of that exists when you are what? Praying. Everything came to an end. Everything halted. You, for those few minutes that you were praying, the rest of your life did not exist. No other priority existed. In fact, you weren't even control, in charge of your own body at that point. You can't just walk the way you want to walk. You can't just put your feet where you want to put your feet. You can't just put your hands where you want to put your hands. Isn't it? Your, everything has been, is completely surrendered over to Allah since you say Allahu Akbar until the time you say Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullah. Yes or no? You know what that is? That's a rehearsal. And one way you can think about the prayer is it's a rehearsal. Rehearsal of what? A day is coming when we will not be in control of our bodies. Allah will truly show us how much greater He is than us. We're not going to be able to speak what we want to speak. We'll only speak what Allah wants us to say. We're not going to be able to move the way we want to move. Allah will have control over our limbs and our body will function in a way that we never imagined before. It's doing things that we didn't want it to do. It's testifying, it's speaking the way we never wanted it to speak. The prayer is a reminder of how, to, how we're gonna all end up surrendering ourselves in front of Allah on Judgment Day. Now think about that. On Judgment Day, it didn't matter what clothes you used to own, it didn't matter what car you had, it didn't matter where you lived, it didn't matter how much money you had, all the arguments you had, all the people you liked, all the people you hated, all of that disappeared. It's just, it's just you and Allah, that's it. It's just you, and Allah, and you're just standing in front of Allah, isn't it? By the way, it's called Yawmul Qiyamah, the day of long standing. And what is the longest part of our prayer? Qiyam. Qiyam. There's a reason for that. We start the prayer by reminding ourselves, standing in front, because when somebody's standing in prayer, they're standing in front of Allah, right? They have to connect themselves to Judgment Day. And they have to connect themselves to Allah as if I am in front of Allah and Judgment Day has already started for me. It's a recap, it's a small preview of what's going to happen on Judgment Day. And on Judgment Day, I want to be able to say the things that will benefit my... because I won't have control over my tongue. I want to be able to say the right things. And the best things I can say are the truth. And Allah tells us His words Himself to say when we stand in front of Allah. That is not something you can just automatically get if you say Allahu Akbar, Subhanakallah, wa bihamdika wa barakatuh. If you do that, you can finish the prayer. And in terms of fiqh, you prayed, but you actually didn't, I didn't connect to Allah that way at all. I, I didn't connect with Allah. I didn't remind myself what this prayer is for. Maintain your connection to Allah through the prayer. Is aqimis salah. Allah is now telling us, people, feel, people say things like, and you might say things to yourself like, I want to feel closer to Allah. I want to feel spiritually connected to Allah. Allah has given us the best program to connect to Him. That's the prayer. 
when the prayer is not doing what it's supposed to do, then you're trying to find some other alternative way to feel spiritual. Because you're not giving the actual connection it's due, right? If you're not eating the actual healthy food, then you're gonna feel better eating junk food. And say, at least I'm getting some nutrition. Yeah, you'll get, even junk food has nutrition. But it's not what you needed. It's not what was gonna truly nourish you. You'll still feel good about it for a few seconds. <laughs> you get something out of it. The same way the first advice he gives to his son is maintain, preserve the actual prayer, the actual connection to Allah. That's what salah is for. That's the goal of salah. So actually taking the time, when somebody says, I want to learn about Islam, right? I want to learn more about my religion. I would argue, you can learn about your religion and you can learn a hundred different sciences in Islam. But one if, if your goal in learning Islam is to connect closer to Allah, everybody would say that. Anybody who's a Muslim would say that, I want to be closer to Allah. Then your first priority should be the prayer itself. What do I know about the prayer? And I'm not just talking about the form of the prayer. How do you make wudu? How do you, where do you stand? You know the technicalities of the prayer. How do I use the prayer to connect to Allah? That's actually the conversation you have to have with yourself. Learn that stuff. Remind yourself of that stuff. And even if you learned it, took a course on it, read material on it, guess what? It still needs maintenance. You could be a scholar and know all the Arabic of the prayer and have studied everything and you can write an article about every, every component of the prayer and you're still not connected to Allah in the prayer because that's all up here but when you say Allahu Akbar, this needs to be connected. This needs to let go of every other preoccupation. And this needs to be overwhelmed and occupied with Allah. That's what needs to happen in the prayer. He gives his son advice Listen, I know your feelings are going to go in every different direction. There's going to be all kinds of things you're going to be hit with. You're going to think about the opposite gender. That those thoughts are going to come to you. You're going to think about your friends. You're going to think about who your friends are and who your friends are not. You're going to think about entertaining yourself. These, there's, your, your mind is going to be spinning with thoughts all the time. You'll be connected to people, to devices, to things to your own feelings. You'll be connected, 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 and it'll become so easy for you to be disconnected from Allah because you're so busy connecting with everything else. And so he tells his, his son, this is something that doesn't automatically happen. The more you connect to those other things, the easier it becomes to disconnect from Allah. Aqim salah Maintain your connection to Allah through the prayer. Preserve that connection. Protect that.